Doxia, what does science tell us about meditation? A lot. Meditation... <laughs> I'm genuinely interested. That was it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would have been sure. I don't, oh, fair enough, he is a quantum physicist. Meditation, properly understood, is a technique to turn the outwardly directed attention within, to experience deeper, quieter levels of thought, to go beyond the thinking process, to experience pure subjectivity, pure consciousness, the source of thought. Science says... This meditative state is a fourth state of consciousness, distinct from waking, dreaming, sleeping. It's a state of very deep rest, deeper than sleep, and simultaneously a unique state of electrophysiological brain functioning. That means orderliness of brain functioning, maximum EEG coherence. And that's important because EEG coherence correlates with rising IQ, intelligence, creativity, learning ability, good looks, psychological <laughs> stability, emotional maturity. Everything good about the mind depends on its orderly function. So. How are those uh, neurological factors that you've just described palpable and tangible? How can you prove that? Simple tests for IQ that kids all take, that adults avoid. You can show that uh, you know, at university kids, for example, intelligence continues to rise. It rises in adults in elderly homes. And at that point, intelligence is not supposed to be increasing. After the age of, well, about your age, intelligence begins to shrink dangerously. 20. <laughs> it's a cruel world. So the fact that anybody can start a process that increases orderly brain functioning, raises intelligence, creativity, learning ability, academic performance, moral reasoning, is an amazing tool for education. I'm very excited about this as an educator. I've noticed my moral reasoning has gone through the bloody roof since I started <laughs> meditating. <laughs> I'm so morally reasonable, sometimes I don't leave the house. <laughs> what does the transcendental element of transcendental meditation mean, please, Doctor? The transcendental is important because it's not about thinking or concentrating or contemplating or visualizing or any kind of intention, any kind of effort. It's about slipping beyond thought to the experience of the source of thought, which is being, pure subjectivity, pure wakefulness. So in that, when that happens, the awareness, which is normally sharply localized, and the harder we concentrate, the more sharply, narrowly focused the awareness is, starts to relax and expand and relax and expand, and then boom, unbounded. Then you get a burst of EEG coherence, and then when that becomes stabilized, orderliness of brain function becomes color fast, permanent. So just in simplistic, laymanistic terms, that initial focus on the mantra gives you access to a broader consciousness. It's not the focus on the mantra, it's the fading of the mantra, which is part of the process. It's, a, it's, a, it's an ancient trick. It happens automatically. It's gone. And when it's gone, you are no longer localized. You are unbounded. It's that unbounded awareness subjectively that gives the global EEG coherence, orderliness of brain functioning. So it's not really about concentrating on a mantra. It's about transcending the mantra. I understand.